Welcome to this lecture on the anatomy of the thyroid. Essentially what this lecture will go through is where the thyroid is located and what kind of structures are around it and also what blood supply both um, brings blood to it and drains blood away. There's two main images that we want to look at today and that's the frontal plane here so we're looking in from the front inwards to the neck and then across here is essentially a cross section. So this is a cut through, so we've cut through and we're looking down, so superiorly, inferiorly down on the thyroid. So let's get our bearings to begin with. What we can see is we've got, most superiorly, we've got the hyoid bone here sitting at the top and then just below it we've got the thyroid cartilage. Between that is the thyrohyoid, thyrohyoid membrane which is um, important for anchoring the hyoid and the thyroid together, which gives it kind of this one unit. As you move inferiorly, you hit this, the next cartilage, which is the cricoid cartilage, and then we move into the trachea and you can see the rings that move down as we go down into the thorax. Sitting in front now, we've got in red, we've got the thyroid gland. Now the thyroid gland is an endocrine gland. Its primary function is to re release T3 and T4 hormone into the blood, as well as calcitonin, which is created by the C cells. T3 and T4 are produced by the follicular cells. So the thyroid, as you can see by its shape, is kind of shaped like a butterfly. So it's kind of got two wings here, and then a, a body connection here. So it's got two lobes, so it's a bilobal structure. It's got a superior and inferior lobe, superior and inferior or um, projection. And so it's going to have a right and a left lobe, so it's bilobal. Okay? Now, on the top end, this is the superior and this is the inferior pole, superior pole, inferior pole, connected in the midline by the isthmus. Now, how high it goes up is approximately just on the inferior border of the thyroid cartilage. So this is going to be kind of at, at level C5. It's going to move all the way down to approximately T1 or about the fourth tracheal ring. So that gives you a, a height of about five centimeters. So the thyroid itself is about five centimeters height. In terms of width, its longest width with the isthmus is about three centimeters and it's about two centimeters deep. Besides these kind of lobes, it can also have this pyramidal lobe here, which you can see kind of jutting up here in the midline. This can actually project all the way up to the, even the hyoid bone. And this is probably remnants of when the thyroid descended down because the thyroid actually came out of the back of the tongue, moves down in front of the hyoid, transverses kind of underneath and then goes down in front where it sits there now. The isthmus has a kind of a, a connected tissue to the second to fourth tracheal, tracheal ring, whilst these lobes are kind of movable. So they can actually move a bit, unlike the isthmuses, which is fairly well stabilized to the trachea. Now there is a capsule, like a fibrous capsule, that fairly well runs over the top of the thyroid, and that can actually run septa into the thyroid gland itself, um, whilst around the front of it is a loose connective tissue which is basically going to be the pretracheal fascia that kind of wraps it around. Sitting in front of it are going to be the strap muscles. So running from kind of behind your manubrium are two muscles that run up like this and they kind of cut in to this oblique line of the thyroid. So that would be the sternothyroid strap muscle on either side and they kind of stop in at that point or insert at that point. That prevents the superior pole going any further. So that's the sternothyroid and then above that from that line is going to be the thyrohyoid strap muscle which is going to go up like that. They're most intimate to the thyroid. Sitting on top of that, so another superficial muscle, is this from the sternum up to the, the hyoid. So that's the sternohyoid muscle. So these are two strap muscles running in front, so the anterior. Other muscles, you're going to have another muscle on either side going from the hyoid across to the scapula, and that's going to be the omohyoid. And then you're going to have, coming from the base of the skull down to the clavicle, the sternum and the clavicle, is the sternocleidomastoid. 
So that's the, the muscle relations. Moving kind of laterally is we've got these two big blood vessels on either side. So starting with the red, which is the artery, you can see coming off from the left ventricle, the aorta, which is arching over. On the right side, we have the brachiocephalic, which is going to be here, going across to the subclavian, and then the common carotid running up like that to the head and face. Uh, moving to the left side, we've got, we don't have a brachiocephalic on this side, but we do have a common carotid and a subclavian, and then the arch of the aorta will go down to the thoracic aorta. Moving across laterally is the, is the subclavian, the left subclavian, and then up here is the common carotid artery. Coming down from the head and face is the internal jugular, which is going to come down and join the brachiocephalic veins, which you can see on each side, subclavian, subclavian vein going down, which is going to go enter the right atria. So the blood supply that's actually supplying, well actually one stop before, I will put the nerve in. So coming down from the top is going to be the vagus and the vagus is going to continue in with those two um, blood vessels on either side running down like this. Now though that vagus, so the left and right vagus will go down and supply the heart and the lungs and the gut, but there will be a branch that will kind of loop underneath this side it's going to go under the subclavian and go behind the thyroid and that's going to be the recurrent laryngeal and on this side it's going to come down and this one will go under the arch of the aorta and come back up behind the thyroid and that's going to be the left uh, recurrent laryngeal. So this one's going under the arch of the aorta, this one's going under the subclavian. Now just up here we do have superior laryngeal branch which is going to go internal branch is going to go into that membrane and the external will come behind. So that becomes important for the blood vessels. Now in terms of the arterial supply to the thyroid, as we go up the common carotid it will bifurcate into an external and an internal carotid artery. The external, so the first branch of the external will give an artery which is the superior thyroid artery. Now that will kind of break off into two. So we're going to have an anterior portion and a posterior. The, po the posterior will probably more follow that external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. And that posterior branch is going to run kind of behind and supply the medial surface and the lateral surface of the thyroid gland. Whereas the anterior branch of the superior thyroid is going to supply the anterior surface. So it's kind of going to do this on both sides. And the posterior is behind. The other one is going to come from this branch of the subclavian. And this is called the thyrocervical branch. And it's going to give it a quite a large branch across behind to go with the recurrent laryngeal. And that's going to supply the inferior portion. And so that's going to go here and same with over here. So it's going to go behind, so inferior, posterior, uh, and su supply the arterial um, blood to the, to the thyroid. So just a take home point there, the thyroid gets two branches of artery. It's going to have the superior branch, that branches into two, an anterior, which is going to do anterior surface, and a posterior, medial, lateral surface, and the inferior thyroid, which is going behind it all, is going to give the inferior and posterior surface of the thyroid. In terms of blood, the blood drainage, venous blood drainage, three main vessels. You're going to have a superior, a middle and an inferior. The superior is going to come much higher and it's kind of going to follow that down. So that's going to supply kind of again this aspect. The middle is going to also come off the jugular, internal jugular. So that's going to supply this aspect. And then the inferior is coming more off the brachiocephalic. So that's going to come off into here and supply this aspect. So that's also on the left side is coming off the brachiocephalic vein and supplying the inferior. So three main veins, superior thyroid coming off the internal jugular, middle coming off the internal jugular and inferior coming off the brachiocephalic vein. There is one additional artery that I did miss and that's going to be the thyroid inma. And that's going to probably come off either the arch, the aorta, or the brachiocephalic. That's kind of running in the midline. 
and that's only present in about 10% of people. So that's the arteries, that's the veins. We've done the relations, the muscles. So basically, and we've put the nerves in. So that's the main things to be aware of. The actual nerve supply to the um, thyroid is coming from the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nerve system. So the sympathetic nerves are coming from the superior middle and inferior cervical coming up. And essentially what that will do is takes the amount of blood going to the gland so it's going to determine whether it's vasoconstricted or dilated. So now finally moving across to this transverse section. So we're going to go through at about a C C7 level. So remember the cricoid is sitting at about C6. So we're going just above the isthmus in a transverse plane. So moving across to here, we can see the structures in that plane. So this is going to be at C7. This is your vertebrae. Moving anterior to it, you've got your esophagus sitting like so. And then moving forward, you've got your trachea. So this is probably going to be about the second tracheal ring. Sitting on either side is going to be thyroid. So this black structure is going to be the thyroid. This is going to be the left. This is going to be the right lobe. We haven't got an isthmus, so they're not quite connected at this point. Now sitting in front, so this is that loose connective tissue, so that's the pre-tracheal fascia. Sitting more posterior is going to be the pre-vertebral fascia. So that's the kind of two separate um, planes that we're sitting in. Sitting to the lat lateral aspect is we got, we've got the, the carotid sheath, which is going to be running up like so. So this is its own kind of, its own kind of fascia. And we've got the internal jugular, the common carotid artery, and the vagus nerve, which we drew in that plane. So that's running on either side, as you'd imagine. Now remember, as the vagus goes down, it will loop back underneath. So that's where we've got these two nerves. That's the recurrent, the, the, the right and the left. And then the bloods are going to be from the in, inferior thyroid artery. Other structures that we can put in is you're going to have the strap muscles sitting in the front here like this. So remember, we've got two strap muscles. We're going to have the sternothyroid and we're going to have the sternohyoid. So that's the sternothyroid and that's the sternohyoid sitting in front. And then finally, sitting out on this aspect would probably be the sternocleidomastoid in its own invested in fascia sitting around like this on either side. Like, this, like so. So that's essentially the anatomy of the thyroid. We've seen where it's located in the body. We've seen its relations, what sits around it. We've seen its blood, so its arterial supply, its venous drainage, its nerve relations, and in both an anterior and a transverse plane.